slaughter, rainbow, slump, heroic. There's an emotional landscape to words. Let's explore. This is a story about something called the Pollyanna hypothesis. That's when you can play the glad game. An idea posited by two psychologists, Jerry Boucher and Charles E. Osgood, who in 1969 said that we frame the human experience in more positive terms than negative ones. In other words, we tend to look at the brighter side of things. Sure, sounds good, but where's the hard evidence? If only we had someone willing to take on the tedious task of teasing out the emotional value of a mountain of words and myriad forms of media, and then run that data through sophisticated computer programs. Enter mathematicians doctors Peter Sheridan Dodds and Chris Danforth, who used big data to make the case that across the 10 languages that they surveyed, people use more positive words than negative ones. In fact, the researchers used 24 sources like websites and music lyrics and works of fiction and social media to build up a database of words, billions and billions of words. From Twitter alone, they collected roughly 100 billion words written in tweets. From there, they figured out the most used words in each language, and then they contracted with a translation service that used native speakers to rate words on a nine-point scale of emotion. So. Something like the word the would be considered neutral with a score of five, while laughter nabbed a score of 8.5 and terrorist, mm, a 1.3. They found that across all 24 sources, the average skewed above the neutral score of five, although there were cultural differences. For instance, a Google web crawl of Spanish language garnered the highest average word happiness and a search of Chinese books the lowest, but what about when all of humanity is having a really crappy day? Does it show up in the data? Yes, it does, thanks to a kind of part B to Dodd and Dance for a study called the Hedonometer. A Hedonometer is a near real-time happiness meter that traces the signals of emotions from English language Twitter posts. Want to know the happiness quotient the day Justin Bieber was arrested or even find out if people on Twitter were happier this Valentine's Day as opposed to last Valentine's Day? Well, go have yourself a look-see at Hedonometer meter.org. In the meantime, consider that this happiness bias might just be one of the cornerstones of our species' success. So think of that beautiful neocortex sitting atop the more ancient parts of your brain. It developed so that we could manage abstract thoughts, everything from parenting to higher cognitive functions like number systems. Now think of a newborn entering a world just booming and buzzing with confusion. Every little trip and misstep is the trial and error of being human. And that happiness bias, that message of, hey, everything is okay, get up and dust yourself off, little kid, gives us a positive narrative, which makes sense when you consider that storytelling is central to the human experience, making you wonder if there could even be an existence without storytelling. So here's an interesting thing. Researchers say that when we delve into our past and we retell it to others, we tend to put a more positive spin on it, which is again, that positive bias. So I wanna hear from you guys. Do you do the same thing when you revisit your memories? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.